Good day, ma'am. I'm Denise Kate Cabiades, and I will be performing the newborn injection checklist. So, intramuscular injections deliver medications through the skin and subcutaneous tissues into certain muscles. Muscles have a larger and a greater number of blood vessels than the subcutaneous tissue, allowing faster onset of action than the subcutaneous injections. So for the first procedure, I have already gathered my equipment. So here I have prepared the syringe, which includes the two pieces, one cc syringe, one piece tuberculin syringe for BCG, and another syringe for um, the reconstitution of the BCG vaccine, and one piece aspirating needle. I have also prepared the medicines, which includes the vitamin K, hepatitis B vaccine, and the BCG vaccine. Also, the dry and wet cotton balls, alcohol, clean gloves, medicine tray, and the medicine cart. Then after that is to check each medication order against the original order in the medical record or patient's chart according to facility policy. Rationale. The primary care provider's order is the legal record of medication orders for each facility. Next is to know the actions, special nursing considerations, safe dose ranges, purpose of administration, and adverse effects of the medicines to be administered. Rationale, this knowledge aids the nurse in evaluating the therapeutic effect of the medication and be used to educate the caregivers or the parents. Then I will now be performing hand hygiene. So hand hygiene prevents the spread of microorganisms. And then I will now be checking the expiration dates of the uh, medications. This prevents medication error and verify calculations with another nurse to ensure safety if necessary. Then, I will now be going to prepare the medications for one patient at a time. So, rationale, this prevents error in medication administration. So, first, I will prepare the vitamin K. Here. So, I will aspirate 0.10 ml from the ampule using the syringe. So I'm going to aspirate 0 0.1. So aspirate first and get 0 0.10 of the vitamin K medication. And then cover the needle and set aside in the medicine tray and also include the medication card. Next is I will be preparing the hepatitis B vaccine. So to prepare this, I will first shake the vial so that the sediments at the bottom mixes completely with the liquid. So if the toxoid is not well mixed, the correct dose cannot be given. So here, I will aspirate 0 0.5 ml from the vial. But I will use um, separate needle for it. So here is my aspirating needle. Then I will be going to aspirate 0 0.5 ml then I will change again the needle aspirating the vaccine then I will 
set it aside together with the medication card. Next is I will be preparing the PCG vaccine. So before aspirating the vaccine, um, I will first perform reconstitution with 1 ml of the normal saline solution. So I will open the ampule. I will get a great syringe. Then I am going to aspirate um, 1 ml. And then I will um, incorporate it to the BCG vaccine. And then discard. Then I will swirl the BCG vac uh, vaccine gently and be careful not to shake it because shaking the vaccine may damage. So, using a special BCG syringe and special BCG um, needle, I am going to aspirate 0.05 ml of the vaccine. So, 0.05 ml. Then cover, then set aside together with the navigation card. After that, I will ensure that the newborn receives the medication at the right time. So let me check. Okay. Then rationale, check agency policy, which may allow for administration of medications within a period of time. Then I will now be performing hand hygiene and put on my PPE if indicated. Rationale, hand hygiene and PPE prevent the spread of microorganisms. So PPE is required based on transmission precaution. Next is to identify the newborn and the newborn should be identified using at least two methods. So here I'm going to identify the newborn's name and the birth date on the identification bond. So rationale, identifying the newborn ensures the right newborn receives the medication and helps prevent errors. So check the name on the newborn's identification bond and also check the birth date on the newborn's identification bond. Next is to put on the gloves. Rationale, gloves help prevent exposure to contaminants. Next is I will select an appropriate administration site. So, rationale, selecting the appropriate site or which is the vastus lateralis prevents injury. So, inject the vaccine into the thigh of the infant and never into the buttocks. So, using the vastus lateralis muscles avoids avoids the risk of sciatic nerve damage from gluteal injection. Then, I will position the newborn for the appropriate position for the site chosen. I will position my patient in um, to lie supine. Rationale, appropriate positioning for the site chosen prevents injury. Infants and young children may lie supine or be held in an adult's lap. Then, identify the appropriate landmarks for the site chosen. So, injection site is at the junction of the middle and upper thirds of the vastus lateralis, so the greater trochanter, and the lateral femoral condyle, um, the in-between area of that is the injection site, so here. Rationale, 
Good visualization is necessary to establish the correct site location and to avoid tissue damage. Then, I will now be cleaning the area around the injection site with an antimicrobial swab. So I will use a firm circular motion while moving outward from the injection site. Rationale, pathogens on the skin can be forced into the tissues by the needle. So moving from the center outward prevents contamination of the site. Allowing skin to dry prevents introducing alcohol into the tissue which can be irritating and uncomfortable for the baby. So note, the site of BCG vaccination should be wiped with sterile water only and no antiseptic solution should be used for cleaning. So using antiseptic may interfere with the immunization process. Now I will remove the needle cap by pulling it straight off by holding my syringe in my dominant hand between the thumb and forefinger. Rationale, this technique lessens the risk of an accidental needle stick and also prevents inadvertently unscrewing the needle from the barrel of the syringe. Then, I will quickly dart the needle into the tissue so that the needle is perpendicular to the patient's body. So, this should ensure that the medication is administered using an injection angle between 72 to 90 degrees. Rationale, a quick injection is less painful. Inserting a needle at 72 to 90 degree angle facilitates entry into the muscle tissue. So here I have injected um, vitamin K, 1 mg IM on left, mid anterolateral thigh. Rationale, to provide protection against neonatal bleeding. So as soon as the needle is in place, I will use my thumb and forefinger of my non-dominant hand to hold the lower end of the syringe. Then I will slide my dominant hand to the end of the plunger and inject the solution slowly. Rationale, moving the syringe could cause damage to the tissues and inadvertent administration into an incorrect area. Rapid injection of the solution creates pressure in the tissues. Then, once the medication has been instilled, I will now withdraw the needle smoothly and steadily at the same angle at which it was inserted, supporting tissue around the injection site with my non-dominant hand. Rationale, slow withdrawal of the needle pulls the tissues and cause discomfort. Applying counter traction around the injection site helps to prevent pulling on the tissues as the needle is withdrawn. So removing the needle at the same angle at which it was inserted minimizes tissue damage and discomfort for the newborn. Then I will apply pressure at the site with a dry cotton and do not massage the site. So rationale for this is that Light pressure causes less trauma and irritation to the tissues. So massaging can force medication into the subcutaneous tissues. Then I will not recap the needle or engage the safety shield or needle guard if present. Then I will discard the needle and syringe in the appropriate receptacle. Rationale for this is that proper disposal of the needle prevents injury. Next is to inject the hepatitis B, B vaccine. Rationale, to prevent severe liver disease that can develop when children or adults are infected with hepatitis B. As soon as the needle is in place, I will use again my thumb and forefinger of my non-dominant hand to hold the lower end of the syringe and I will slowly inject the solution. So 
So once the medication has been instilled, I will again withdraw the needle smoothly and steadily at the same angle at which it was inserted, supporting the tissue around the injection site with my non-dominant hand. Then I will apply gentle pressure at the site with a dry cotton ball and not also massaging the site. Then I will not prick up the needle and engage or engage safe to shield or needle card if present, then discard the needle and syringe in the appropriate receptacle. Lastly is to inject the BCG 0.05 ml intradermal on left upper arm or depending on agency policy. Rationale for this is that to protect newborns from serious forms of tuberculosis such as TB meningitis, an infection of the brain, and miliary TB or widespread infection. So I will position the infant uh, for BCG vaccine usually on the outer part of the left upper arm and um, I will ask the parent to free the infant's arm from clothing and hold the infant firmly. So. Then I will cleanse the area around the injection site with sterile water only and no antiseptic solution. I will hold the syringe with my right hand so that my left hand is under the arm and my thumb and fingers reach around the arm and stretch the skin tight. So I will hold the syringe in my right hand with the bevel of the needle facing upward. Then I will lay the syringe and needle almost flat along the infant's arm. Then I will insert the needle just under the skin insert only the bevel and a little bit more and then keep the needle flat along the arm so that it goes to the top layer of skin only keep the bevel facing up then I will not push too far and do not point down or the needle will go under the skin so if BCG is injected under the skin an abscess or enlarged glands may result then to hold the needle in Position, I will put my left thumb on the lower end of the syringe near the needle but not to touch the needle. Then I will hold the plunger of um, end of the syringe between the index and middle finger of my right hand and I will press the plunger in with my thumb. Then inject the vaccine and remove the needle. So, if I have injected the BCG correctly, I will see a clear flat top swelling on the skin called a white lump or pleb. And when an intradermal injection is given correctly, the plunger is hard to push. After that is to place the newborn to a position of comfort. So, I will swaddle the baby. Give it to um, the mother. Rationale. This provides comfort and well-being of the newborn. Now I will be removing my gloves. And um, additional PPE. Then I will perform hand hygiene. So, rationale, removing PPE properly reduces the risk of infection, transmission, and contamination of other items. So, hand hygiene prevents the spread of microorganisms. After that, I will now be documenting the administration of medication immediately after administration. So, rationale for this is that timely med documentation helps to ensure patient safety. 
Then I will evaluate again the newborn's response to the me medication within the appropriate time frame. So I will assess the site, if possible, within two to four hours after administration. So rationale, the newborn needs to be evaluated for the therapeutic and adverse effects from the medication. Visualization of the site allows for assessment of any untoward effects. So that's all. Thank you.